Oh, hello. <laughs> You're standing in a barely visible spot. Come here. Hi, Nacho. Welcome back to my kitchen. Welcome back to Aries Kitchen. This week, here with something festive. And I'm not talking about this Greyhound, although he is festive. His name is Nacho. He's our foster. He's gonna be helping me and getting in my way today. It's festive because it's Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. I hope you're having a good holiday, surrounded by loved ones. And if you're not, we're here for you, you know? Hang out with us, watch the video, pretend like I'm cooking for you. Even though at the end of it, I can't actually feed you. But we can do this recipe together. It's actually, um, this is a really festive, fun recipe. One that I've never done before, which I'm excited about. We're taking it easy today. It's like, I'm not making a whole Thanksgiving meal. I'm not making a whole bunch of pies. It's like low stress. Let's just take it easy, you know? Crank the oven up really high, forget about it for a while, take a little nap on the floor, wake up, not remember what planet you're on. And then there's a little treat waiting for you. So hopefully that will be somewhat like the experience we all get to have today. I don't even know if I need oven mitts today, but I got them ready. I found a recipe that looks just like a good time. It's pumpkin pie cookies. It's my favorite type of holiday or any other type of pie, shrunken down into a little, little bite-sized little guy, little tiny king cookie. We're basically just making like dough and then a pumpkin pie filling. Do you ever have those little toys when you were a kid? It shot, it was like a little, shooter that shot out these like foam discs and you would stack the discs and then look at your brother and just go bam, 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 bam. And then it would just like repeatedly hit them in the head till you got put in timeout. That's how I want to eat these pumpkin pie cookies. I just want them to be funneled into my mouth via projectile action. Maybe, maybe when the cookies are ready, we can find a way to do that. Maybe you can help me. Maybe just whip a couple of these cookies at my face if you, if you wouldn't mind, please. For this recipe, you're basically just gonna need pumpkin pie things. Uh, it's a mix of items, some of which I have here. Hopefully I didn't forget anything, but I probably did. We're talking like flour, both white and brown sugar, egg replacer, cornstarch, vanilla extract, room temperature plant butter, pumpkin puree, maple syrup, and then maybe, you know, some other stuff like salt. You know, the forgotten ingredients that we don't need to talk about. So for this recipe, we're gonna be doing it in two parts. We're gonna be making the dough and then we're gonna let the dough chill. Let it chill, let it calm down. And while it's chilling, we're gonna be prepping the filling and preheating the oven. And then we just, everything comes together, it's gonna to be perfect. And then we have a treat at the end of it. So pumpkin pie cookies today, if you, if you don't mind, you know what I mean? If that's cool with you, I'm just gonna make some little baby pie cookies. And then, uh, you know, celebrate how thankful I am. Cause I, I am very thankful and I'm thankful for you. So here, have some flowers. They are real. Don't look too close. They're Legos. It's, uh, it's for you. I'll just leave it right there, okay? Just fo follow the instructions, water it with Lego water every two to five seconds and it won't they won't die. I do wonder about this recipe. So we're making mini pumpkin pies. They're pumpkin pie cookies. But if, if we were to make enough pumpkin pie cookies and we filled a pie tin with the pumpkin pie cookies and then we put pumpkin pie filling on top and then we baked it, would that be pumpkin pie? Or would it be pumpkin pie cookies pie? Or what if you take a bunch of those pies and put it in an even bigger pie tin and then you cover it with more pumpkin puree, would that be pumpkin pie? Or would it be pumpkin pie cookies pie cookies pumpkin pie? My brain hurts now. Okay. It's time to begin. One thing I've... One thing I forgot to mention is if you have the ability, if you're making this with me, some plant-based whipped cream could be a good little topping. It was like an optional piece of this recipe, but I did end up buying some oat-based whipped topping. So we're gonna be using that later and I didn't show it, so I wanted to mention it. Uh, anyway, we're starting with the butter. Nope, nope. We're using the butter to start the recipe with our dough. This is the butter um, I'm using. How much butter do we need? Tell me, I forget. Half a cup. The whole thing is a half a cup. Good to know. It has a little markings on here if you know how to convert centimeters into butter. Uh, so I think we put all the butter in this mixing bowl right here. Look at that, easy peasy. Then we're gonna add our half a cup of sugar. That is just the white sugar. <clears throat> as well as uh, whatever the measurement was of brown sugar. I think it's a third a cup, not as much as a half, smaller amounts. So we have both sugars in there and 
We are going to mix it with our whisk head that we definitely didn't drop on the floor. 100% clean, so don't worry. Uh, we're gonna get cooking with that. This is gonna give us our little starter mix for the dough because we'll add flour after this. We should get a little uh, spatula to help clean off the sides. So we want this to go for two minutes until it's creamy and fluffy. Well, I don't have a watch on, so I can't time two minutes, but I can tell when something's creamy and fluffy. That's, that feels more scientific. So let's just let it cook for a while. Tastes like butter and sugar. Uh, the next piece of this is going to be our egg replacer, which we need our little tiny whisk for. So we're gonna get a little bit of water in here. I think like two tablespoons of water. There's one, there's a half. And let's just kind of mix this up till it's egg consistency. And we can also add our vanilla extract in here. That's what's gonna be added to the mix next. I feel like the whisk isn't even really touching the mixture. You know, like, what are we doing here? It's just like not enough to, to have it be making contact, but whatever, we'll figure it out or we won't and everything will come out terrible and we'll be sad that we wasted our time. Okay, I'm gonna put in our, calm down. I'm going to turn this off, lift it up and put in our egg mixture with our vanilla extract. And we're gonna let this kind of blend together for about 30 seconds. Okay, so now we are gonna add the baking stuff in. We're gonna do a half a teaspoon of baking powder. This is a fourth, so we're gonna do two of these. There's one and two. Then we're gonna add our salt and our pumpkin pie spice together. That was really loud. Oh, it says make sure to add the flour first. <laughs> Nice. Then add the other ingredients on top. Why did it not start with that, man? Feels like a really important thing to put at the end of the instruction. Okay, all the flour's in. The dough will start off crumbly. Uh, yeah, I think so. I keep mixing until it gets soft and holds together. This can't be it. There's no way. There's no way this is it. It's way too crumbly. We gotta trust the process though, you know? Somebody tell the process that I have trust issues though, cause I, I don't know about all this. All right, I'm just trying to get all of the, the sugar and butter mixture off the sides so that it can blend better. Maybe I'll just leave it on kind of a low setting. Are you dough? It's still pretty crumbly. Crumbly. Mix everything together until a thick cookie dough forms. Bro, this is not a cookie dough. If this doesn't work, I'm, I'm just gonna throw a fit and freak out. Hope that's cool with y'all. Telling me to put the flour in first at the end of the instructions feels like watching a Minecraft farm build tutorial. And then at the very end, they're like, oh yeah, by the way, it has to be at Y500 in a deep ocean biome. And then ne they never mention that. And then you put in five hours of work and the farm's not working. And then when you were little, did you ever have a bowl of ice cream and just do this until it became soup? Cause I did. What is happening? This looks like sand. This is this is a sand tutorial. What the hell? That is not dough. Okay, this looks like the most doughy that the stand mixer is gonna get it. I'm gonna try to hand mix the rest. Okay, so I had to give it a little extra love. I put a little bit more of the room temperature butter in and just a tiny bit more of the um, egg replacer just to kind of bind it together. And I think it worked because, I don't know about you, but that looks way more like some dough than we had before. It looked like don't before. And now we got some dough. So um, I'm not gonna try to touch it too much. I think I'm just gonna kind of make sure it's all in one little spot. And then we cover it and refrigerate for 30 minutes or a day. That's what the recipe says. 30 minutes or a whole day. No variation there. Okay. We're gonna try to cover this. With some plastic food suffocating wrap. Okay, so it's airtight, no air allowed. We're gonna put this in the fridge for 30 minutes. Since you don't like when I tell Google to start timers for many years on my videos. Could you start a timer for me 30 minutes? If you don't mind, just let me know in 30 minutes when the dough is ready to, just let me know. 
so I don't have to use a hey Google timer 74 years. Now we make our pumpkin pie filling, okay? This is what is going to provide all of the flavor, all of the pumpkin pie-ness to our cookies so that they don't just taste like cookies, but little baby pies shoveled into your mouth at 45 miles an hour. Okay, it is time to make the filling of the pumpkin pie cookies. And this is gonna fill the cookies and you with joy. So let's take our pumpkin puree, which is not a pumpkin pie mixture. Apparently that's a common mistake because every single recipe I've ever seen that has anything to do with a pumpkin pie warns you like 45 times not to use the pumpkin pie puree. It's pure pumpkin. Otherwise it's too sweet and we can't have that. Ugh, this is not going well. Let's do this. We're doing some science here. We need two thirds. That's one third. And that is two thirds. Easy peasy of the pumpkin puree, and then hold it up like this and see how long until it falls out of the spoon. Okay, two thirds of the puree, done. Also make sure you're cleaning up along the way because you don't wanna like leave pureed pumpkin all over your counter, like that's gross. So just make sure you're tidying up. Okay, I'm gonna get my whisk out. Get the one with the wooden handle. W wouldn't you like to whisk this pumpkin puree so we can have a sweet treat at the end of the day? What is on here? This feels like it might not be clean. I came prepared, okay? Don't, don't even, you know what I mean? Just like, pfft, I came prepared. It's still dirty though. Oh wait, no, that's from the, I think that's like sticky residue from the, oh, uh, is this still dirty? I can't tell if this is from like the, the little sticker tag with the price on it, but I don't remember a sticker tag being there. Give me like 45 minutes. I'm just gonna wash this whisk. How do you even wash a whisk? I can't get any grip on this thing. Okay, I think, it, I think we're good. I think, I think the whisk is clean and ready to use. So we have our pumpkin puree. What do we add to it? Tell me. Oh my God, these Pinterest recipes and they're like 45 year long stories. Okay, maple syrup. Fourth a cup of maple syrup. So maple syrup, pour in time. Ooh, baby. Okay, that's gonna be the main sweetener. Two tablespoons of oat milk. Did you bring the oat milk? Okay, we got the Oatly full fat oat milk because I feel like cooking or baking rather requires the thickest. You thicker than a bowl of oat mi oatly oat milk. Cornstarch, a little bit of cornstarch in here. Let's toss that in. Vanilla and pumpkin pie spice. I thought we already used the pumpkin pie spice. Okay, oh well. Okay, we're using pumpkin pie spice for the filling as well as the dough, I think. I'm just gonna put a little bit here because I don't know how much. And then vanilla, I don't know, couldn't be too much. Maybe just a little bit like that. And then we whisk all of this together until it's smooth and when we set it aside for later. For later. Okay, this is actually smelling really good. Are you keeping a timer on the dough? Look how nice this looks. Oh baby. The texture is great, it smells great. I imagine it probably tastes great. What is this sugar for? Why is it still here? What did we not put that in? About 10 minutes before removing the dough from the fridge, preheat the oven to 350, line a tray with parchment. Remove the dough from the fridge, use a cookie scoop to scoop out evenly sized cookies, then roll each ball in sugar. Okay, so we do need the sugar. So now we're at the part of the recipe where we have our filling done, it's beautiful, and our dough is almost done. It's just cooling off, okay? The dough's a little hot-headed, needed to take five. Once everything is done chilling, then we can just start cooking, uh, but we, we do need to wait a little bit. So in the meantime, do whatever you need to do, okay? If you gotta go, Wash your dishes or your clothes or both, you know, put them all in the same machine. Maybe that would work. I don't know. I'm not an inventor. Sharks. Do you hate washing your dishes and your clothes separately? Introducing the dishwasher machine. <sighs> Nobody died during trials. All right, the cookie dough is done cooling off. I just removed it from the fridge. And now let's make these cookies. Time to get cozy and festive and holiday, you know what I mean? The dough looks good, I think, respectfully. Okay, so we are gonna need to scoop out 10 to 11 evenly sized cookies. I don't know how to do that. I'm just gonna start rolling out little cookies in ball shape and hope that they're the right size. 10 to 11, I think. Okay, so cookies are scooped into 10 little ball shape little guys. And because it's gluten free, it's gonna be crumbly. So we gotta be mindful of that. Not let this process take too long because I don't think the air is helping. It's kind of drying them out. 
So I'm gonna take some of the sugar and I'm just gonna actually, fuck it. I think you wanna just kind of coat these in sugar. And then we'll get our baking sheet ready to go. And we'll just place them once they've been coated. You know, it's cold out. The weather is started to get a little rainy and cloudy. These cookies, they need, you know, a coating to stay warm. We gotta give them protection from the elements out here in Los Angeles. There's gotta be a faster way to do this. Oh, here we go. Now we're cooking. This is the strap. Do this. If you're in the comment section right now, do this. Oh my God, look how fast that works. I'm actually so proud of this. Are you kidding me? All the cookies are coated magically. Now we have to push a little indent with our thumb. Slightly press each dough ball down with your thumb. Use your thumb to make an indent in the center of each cookie, then use your fingers to spread the dough out. What the? Okay, so we just gotta flatten them with our palm. A lot of palms and hands and thumbs going on here. We're sort of just like making a little well, I think is the term for the pumpkin pie filling in each of these little dough balls so that the filling can stay in one spot and not just like overflow off the edge and ruin everything and make it so this whole thing was for nothing and rob us of the tiny sugary treat that we just so desperately need today. Like we just need this. Can we just have one thing? I will say it's like, I kind of like the idea of making a pie cookie because sometimes I'm not ready to like full commit to a whole slice of pie, but I do want like a little taste. And in the past, I've just taken a spoon to the pie, which if you're in a house with other living people can potentially upset those people. So this might be a good little way around that, you know, always thinking, always thinking ahead. Okay, now we're gonna take the filling and just nicely, a little dollop, maybe like a tablespoon, is just gonna go into each little dough ball. And then we get, then we get going. Then it's time to uh, bake these and eat them. So put some, uh, let's try this one. I'm nervous to like overflow because like even that feels like too much. Cause I feel like it's just gonna, in the oven, it's just gonna all bleed over the top, but maybe it won't. I've never done this before. So maybe I should have flattened the cookies out more. I, I don't know. I literally just work here. All right, cookies are all prepped. I think they're ready to go in the oven. 12 to 14 minutes at 350, see what happens. If it's terrible, don't worry. Okay, the cookies have made it out of the oven. It took almost twice the amount of time the recipe suggested. Two reasons I think that might've happened. One is it's gluten-free dough, needs extra time to cook. That's pretty normal. And then the other is I think I didn't make them as flat as I should have. I mean, they look pretty damn cool, but I think they were supposed to be more flattened out and like wider. Uh, I was just worried that they would break, which to be fair, they might break like this too. We'll just have to see, but I'm gonna top them with some little whipped and make them beautiful. I think we were supposed to wait for them to cool. <laughs> Uh, cause the whipped cream is like melting really fast right now. Anyway, these are the cookies. They're beautiful. Come have some before they melt. Hurry up. Oh my God. Oh my God. They're melting and they look so bad. <laughs> I should have waited. I should have waited for them to cool. Why didn't you tell me to wait for them to cool? All right, let's take a bite. Here's our cookie. It looks medium. It looks like I baked it. It looks exactly like I baked it. Okay, it's really good. I mean, there was really no world where this was gonna come out tasting bad, right? It's like sweet pumpkin pie filling, cookie dough. Yeah, I mean, this looks like a terrible disaster happened in my kitchen. And it kind of did, because I didn't follow the instructions. So now I just have like wet cookies, but it's good. It's really good. Just maybe wait till they cool to put the whipped cream on. I'm gonna have another bite. Oh. Okay, that was a good bite. I got a lot of pumpkin pie in that one. This is great. This is easier than baking a pie and it's more like snack friendly. You can just grab one and go. I was just so excited to try them that I destroyed every single one of them on this plate, but I definitely will be eating all these. They just don't look super cute, which is fine. Maybe if I add more whipped cream, it'll help.
who ordered the pumpkin disaster for dessert. Wow, it really does look disastrous, but it smells really good. And I promise you it tastes good. I'm not lying. I've never lied. It tastes really good. That's pumpkin pie. It's literally just pumpkin pie. It's, it's pumpkin pie for your hands. Anyway, I did my best. And by that, I mean, I did. Uh, I just wanted to make something festive. You know, this wasn't the most incredible recipe of all time, nor was it the most ambitious, but we shrunk down some pumpkin pies and we made them cute and bite-sized and mostly followed the recipe. I encourage you to try this if you're a fan of pumpkin pie. I think it's, uh, I think it's a great delivery system for the flavor profile of pumpkin pie. You want a baked good, you want the pumpkin pie filling, and even some whipped cream. Make cookies. Easy, easy peasy. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank you for watching my video. Uh, I'll be back in a week or two or three or four or five or six or seven. I actually don't know, but I'm gonna be making some uh, more recipe videos soon. And um, who knows, maybe we'll do another holiday episode before we're in the new year. So let me know what you think. And if you have ideas, send them to me via airdrop. And I'll see you later. Happy Thanksgiving. I love you. Oh, don't forget to turn the oven off.